Hey everybody, we're live again here from the Crafty Gemini shop and studio in Gainesville, Florida. Amanda. <laughs> and I'm Vanessa, the Crafty Gemini. We are back. Last Sunday we tried this out and we did a live chat here where we were working on some vinyl crafts and you were working on what was it? On sewing stuff? Um, I don't remember. I was doing the appliques or whatever. The oh yeah, the, the little applique, applique pieces whatever. for purses. Hi y'all. And I was working on some Cricut vinyl stuff. We were talking about the Cricut machine, silhouette cutting machine. This time we're working on sewing stuff. So Amanda has some purse vinyl she's making. What, what are you making with? I'm making a cross body bag for my mother-in-law. Okay, cool. And I'm working on a baby quilt using my 10 inch slicer ruler. Hi y'all. Hi. We're at the shop. So we have a couple <laughs> friendly customers in. I saw your Sashiko stitches. They look great. Oh yeah, I want to see them. <laughs> yeah, they look really good with the chambray color and the, and the red. Bring it so we can show it on camera here. Hi, we have Peggy tuning in from Pennsylvania. Leslie from Texas. Look how cute. Say hi, you want to get on camera? You're on the YouTube. Hi. <laughs> so she got some chambray fabric from us here yesterday, and she's playing around with some um, sashiko stitches. Were you following a template? Or you? No, I kind of just drew it on the back. Drew the lines, yeah, with like a water-soluble marker thing? No, that's a Sharpie. Oh, it's a Sharpie. Okay. <laughs> Sample piece, right? Sample. It looks really good. And then I started trying to do some pluses. Oh, look how I love that look. I had a print like that in one of my um, fabric collections. Yeah, my first fabric I collection. have it. Oh, you have it? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Look how cute. Awesome. Good deal. So Regal will help you guys with whatever you need. Thank you. Yeah. Let me know if you have any other questions. Okay. Awesome. So we have people from Boston. Oh, somebody's traveling on I-95, safe travels. It's a little bit rainy over here. Hopefully it's not storming down south. Vicky from Tampa is in. Hi. Hi, Diane from the UK. Um, I'm working on a quilt project, and I will just share with you my fabrics. Amanda, feel free to jump in if you want to tell them whatever it is that you're doing. I just don't want to mess you up. You know, when you make a wrong cut on vinyl, it can be a little... I'm just cutting the strap right now. So. The strap? And what do you usually, what's the width that you use? Um, for this one, I'm doing a one inch strap. So I'm cutting two inch, or yeah, half inch strap, half inch strap. So, oh, because you fold this yes. one piece, you do it's, it like a binding. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Is that how you usually do it? And stitch it It depends pretty easily? on the bag. Yeah. All right. I am working on a baby quilt for a friend of mine who had a little baby boy. So she wanted some blues. And I just went ahead and pulled some blues from my stash. Hi, Annette from Chicago. So these are just some fabrics. They're grayish, bluish, bluish grays, like slate blues. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but it's kind of like pick out some fabrics. We're going to cut some stuff. I think I'm going to work on the peak block, which is geometric. They're just going to be like triangles in the middle. And I can swap out the background pieces of fabric. And I think that that will work for a little boy. Should be fine. Hi, Mel from Canada. I'm going to work on pressing my fabric. I have a little ironing mat here and my starch. And then we'll talk a little bit, you know, just kind of walk y'all through what we're doing with the, um, at least for me, with the cutting. And you with a, a dull blade on that teensy rotary cutter of mine. It is not, this is mine. Oh, that's yours. Yeah. Oh, mine is up there. <laughs> is that what you used to cut all the bulk stuff? Yeah. No? Yeah? Uh, because they can go through curves easier, yeah. so I use this little one. But even the vinyl, if you have it, like, say you have vinyl on foam. Um, I never cut them together. Oh, not like when you base the edges or... Oh, I use scissors and, like, cut it, like, in the seam allowance to, to get rid To of the grade bulk. it a little bit, yeah. yeah. So yeah, this dry. vinyl, what is the interfacing going to be on this purse? Um, I do not interface vinyl because it's nice. It has a good enough body. Let me see. And it's, like, marine vinyl? Yes, it's from Punk Broidery. Punk uh, it's Broidery. the midnight black, so it's, like, a matte color instead of shiny which i like cool it has that cool texture to it too mm -hmm. i don't know if you can see that or not but it has a little bit of a texture to it hi maria from jacksonville um i cut it on the length so because i can get it as long as possible when you order a like a roll from punk broidery it comes like 12 by 54 so so it's by the whole width of the fabric yeah, yeah. i just do the whole length of it or width or whatever and that's for a crossbody, you say? Yeah, so it'll be it'll be long enough. She taller than you? Yeah. Well, you. <laughs> I can't get it longer. <laughs> so without piecing. And I know some people that piece. 
I mean, and I've pieced some straps like that before with cork. I don't like piecing straps. Yeah, you just got to do like a bigger seam allowance and press it open and maybe do some top stitching to reduce the bulk because yeah. it can be a lot. So many different ways to do the same things. When I use patterns to cut vinyl, I do like a mirror so I'm I don't positive. have to fold it, cut it on the fold. So. Yeah, because when it's bulkier fabric. Well, and you don't want to really fold the vinyl, so... But you don't press it either, right? You just work with it as is and you yep. make the bag like that. Cute. I usually print out two copies of the pattern, but I forgot. Yeah. So you just... I just traced it. And taped it. Yeah. I wonder how are you storing these? Since these? you do so many PDF patterns, like all your pattern template pieces. <laughs> Let's not talk about how I store my patterns. <laughs> <laughs> no storage tips on PDF patterns. There's so many pieces because, you know, handbags... <laughs> I have, can have a lot um, like of poly mailers since I ordered a bunch of them for orders mm -hmm. and I kind of stick them in the poly mailers and then label them on that like metal that little like silvery piece you pull off to stick it so yeah. that if I ever need the poly mailer I can just pull off the name oh and, my <laughs> word and use the power <laughs> okay I don't know how many people are actually going to do that but that's one way <laughs> yeah I know it has to be something like more I don't know, like more permanent, you know, because some people are like, oh, um, yep. those sticky notes, but then you lose them. If you start stacking stuff like up, they get lost. File, files, yeah. like in a filing cabinet or something like That's that. That's fancy. That's a little too organized for my um, characteristics. Usually I just throw them on my one table and there's a pile of patterns on that table. <laughs> yeah, that sounds more like <laughs> me too. It's like when I need it, I grab it and then I just throw it off to the side. Yeah. And then if I need it again, I'm like, I don't have any idea where this is. This is the third time I've printed this pattern. Right? But that's the good thing about PDFs is that you can keep printing. Because if you spend, you know, $15, $18 on a pattern and then you misplace it, well, you, are you going to buy it again? I don't like the shops. Or are you going like, to clean your sewing yeah. room and find it? I don't like the shops that are like, you can only download this 10 times. I'm like, Pfft. well, because some of the systems are like that based on where they're selling it. Because when I used to have stuff on Big Cartel, it was like that would just do it three times. But then all they had to do was like email me and then it would say, you know, they'll send me a link saying, hey, can you please renew my three downloads? But nowadays, it's so much has changed, right? With Shopify and some other e-commerce options out there. All right, so let's see. We're Candy's asking, is this the type of material we can use for the essential tote bag? I'm having problems finding straps for the bag. You can totally use that vinyl. Yeah, yeah. you can use any, any sturdy enough material for the straps especially, or you can use a flimsier fabric, but then interface it with something, right? Like Durafuse or foam stabilizer. Yeah. Anything just to give it a little bit more body. I mean, I've I do made bags make a with... lot of fabric straps. Yeah. You just have to interface it. And it just takes longer, yeah. though, to like cut those strips. If you're making it super long, then you have to piece them together, then you interface it, then you top stitch it. That's why I kind of avoid crossbody bags. Because of the full length, right? Yeah. It has to be way longer, yeah. But this is the style that my mother in law likes, so. Well, that's nice of you. So nice. <laughs> Which brings me to a question, as those of us that are makers and we make stuff for people, do you all out there tend to make stuff for people like, as gifts because you like the fabric or you want to work on the project yourself? Or in this case, is this a bag that you like to make? Or do you feel like you're kind of biting your tongue like you don't um, like to work with the fabric? This is a so nice pattern. Make... I've made three other bags with this pattern. Yeah. So... Because I see sometimes, and I have people that will come into the store and say, like, I'm making this for some, you know, family member. And they're like, oh, she likes orange. I hate this color, but it's what she wants. So I have to find the yeah. fabrics. So it's like, how do y'all balance that? Making a project for someone that you love, but you don't really care too much for either the project or the fabrics. Like, do you make it just because you they like it or that they're going to like it? Because for me, it's like a hobby. I feel like I should enjoy the whole process. I'm using canvas. Just Let me see. A canvas print that I ordered especially for my mother-in-law because she's like a huge Stephen King fan. So canvas is good for bags. It has a good weight to it, so that you're yes. not interfacing this. I'm gonna interface it because I don't want to fusible fleece the bag since yeah. I'm using Durafuse and canvas. I don't want it to get too bulky. Okay. Interesting. That's definitely going to be a one-of-a-kind bag, and whoever likes Stephen King is going to, you know, those are the kind of bags that people will stop you and ask you, like, where did you get that? Debbie says, I make it because I like it. I got to enjoy the process. I'm going to have to, like, that's how I am. Like, I don't want to force myself to spend all this time and energy in a project that I'm not going to like making, but I'm not really a gift giver. Are you? 
Yeah, you I like make them? a lot of stuff for people, but it's usually like, well, my friends like trust me to make like stuff that's gonna they're gonna like and that I, that I think is cool. So they give you creative, um, like you have the full yeah, creative process to do whatever you want. Usually when my friends order back to me, they're like, just do your thing. And I'm like, yes, that's always the best. That's always the best. I feel like too, for a creative person, it's like, I don't want to be limited by like, I like this color, but not this shade, but not this, not too big, not too that. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, um, yeah. maybe make it yourself. <laughs> Usually they'll pick like the pattern and yeah. then everything else, the design elements of it all get to choose. That's good. But I'm not, I don't really like gifts and I don't really give gifts. I'm not, gifts is not my love language. Let's say that. I like gifts. <laughs> that, but that's what they say, right? That people that usually like to get gifts like to also give them. I, I don't, I don't care. It's like if I really want something, I'm just gonna get it myself. It's, um, it's just not my thing. I got this canvas from, it's called It's So Creative, S-E-W for the so. It's a custom fabric company, but there's a lot of custom fabric groups that do canvas now. It's getting more popular. That's her thing. This girl's all into the custom fabrics. Lift your leg up so you can show them your other. <laughs> she <laughs> made those leggies exactly. with her. <laughs> my so sketchy prints. Is that what it's called? Or that's yeah. the company? No, the company is Backstitch Fabrics. Oh, Backstitch Fabrics. Cool. Yeah, she's all into custom. She needs her one-of-a-kind stuff. <laughs> Have y'all been knitting socks? No. No? no. Yes. <laughs> Tanya says yes. yes Good. Picking up some more fabric. I've been giving away more than I've Yeah. Knit. But do you have it down already? Like you're working on different yeah. patterns? Yeah, because you did the ribbing and all that you were showing oh, me, right? Yeah, it's good. So the ladies that are here have sock knitting machines. Anybody out there have a sock knitting machine? <laughs> Any knitters in the house? I'm always so intrigued by all the different random crafts, you know, like different talents. And I've noticed the more I share about different stuff, the more of us do multiple crafts. You have to. Like one thing gets boring real quick and then it's like, now nah, let me jump to this. Let me go back to this. Yeah. I like when I make props for costumes. That's what props I'm for costumes. You're into all the, um, what do they call it? Cos cosplay. I used to, but like it's now it's for my kids for Halloween. I mean, I do those too, but other than that, I don't, you know, like aside from an actual Halloween. Look how cute this print is. I like that. Uh, Angelia says she's never heard of a sock knitting machine. Some people are like, sock knitting machine? Can we see? Either. So we don't have it here. It's like a whole set of the thing is heavy. You don't really move them. It depends, right? They have like some I little smaller them, yeah. electronic ones, uh, like electric ones, I should say, that are like tabletop ones. Some you can take with you, but you have a, a heavy, heavy yeah. yeah, a heavy duty They're one. Heavy. <laughs> They're all metal, right? They got a... Yeah. They're circular. Circular sock knitting machines. Yeah, circular sock knitting machines. Lisa says she's a hand knit uh, sock knitter here. She says she loves it as it is a mindless knitting. Agreed. For sure, for sure. I love that. Just knit, pearl, knit, pearl, or something else. Let's show a picture. Yeah, let's show a picture. So this is a circular sock knitting machine. <laughs> it's two. That's two? Wait. Yeah. Oh, the one in the background. I see it. The one in the background is a 1914. 1914 these things have been around i mean that's how they made socks right and that's is that a tube that you're making there yeah did you dye that yarn no oh i think it's knit picks yeah it's super cute this is an earl bocker gear heart circular sock knitting machine awesome good deal right. what you cut out the bottom pieces yeah two okay. bottom pieces yeah black looks good with that though because it lets, I think, the, the titles of the books pop, you yeah. know? They had there's so two, much color on them. two different prints, but I got the ones that were, like, more the original instead of the remake covers, like this one. Have you read most of those books? I don't. The I only don't, Stephen King books I read are the Dark Tower series. It's fabulous. I yeah. I don't read. Y'all know that by now. <laughs> I'm actually... Okay, so when they did the win through the keyhole, they did a mosaic on the back where you sent in your picture and you got to be part of the mosaic and I got selected. So I'm tiny on the back of a Stephen King book. No way. <laughs> That's hardcore. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is something you like to sew that's more geared towards boys? I always want to make my teenage boy stuff but can never think of anything to make. So for me, I like to make a lot of practical stuff. So whether it's like some type of gym bag or tote bag or a quilt, everybody always can use a quilt. This is your circular sock knitting machine? Yes. Yeah, you see this one, she can't move. This is it's a, a whole setup. This is an LT150 by Lamb Tuttle. 
Lamb Tuttle. And they're out of Massachusetts? Uh, Is that where they're made of? They're U.S. made. I see the flag yeah, on it. Yeah. Um, Chicopee, yes, Massachusetts. So this is her lamb circular sock knitting machine. It's like a whole setup. If you get into it, carve yourself out of space in your craft room for sure, right? Um, I just use regular thread when I make purses with vinyl. And it what do you mean by regular? My, like polyester. Yeah. Or... That's what I use. Anything that's going to get like a lot of wear and tear, the same as garments, if it's a stretch knit or it's going to be just worn a lot. Like a handbag, most of us, if you really like it, you'll end up making it right like your everyday purse. I would definitely um, recommend 100% polyester. Some people I know get away with like 100% cotton thread, like a 40 yeah. weight. I only use But if you're not going to use it like every day. I, mean, I only use not... the 100% cotton for like bowl cozies and uh, like oven mitts and stuff. Stuff that so you have to use So they don't burn and cotton, melt. Yeah. yeah, so that's it. I only use cotton really on quilts. Like piecing patchwork stuff for a quilt. Hi, Lily. Hey, Liz. We have another one from the UK tuning in. And then Wendy says that your t-shirts are amazing for boys too. So clothes, that Nico Raglan, I have a free tutorial series for it on YouTube, is an amazing pattern. My son has made that a bunch of times. I've made some for him and um, I've made several for my husband too who loves them. I make my husband a lot of like boxers. Yeah. Um, you know what they could do too is like these custom printed um, stretch knit like jersey or cotton spandex fabrics. That's kind of cool because if they're into some type of Thing, whatever the theme is yeah. you could use that right as a theme for, or like as the focal point of the front and then a raglan like the, the one I'm wearing here this is the girl version of the Jolly raglan pattern a, finished I have a golf club cover pattern that I made golf club covers wow mm -hmm. that's a guy thing I think I need to like actually put it on the like be able to sell it because they don't have any out there yeah they don't exist. and a lot of guys play golf this is true Karen's asking, hi, what are you making? We are working on different projects. She's working on a purse for a gift for her mother-in-law. And I am prepping all my fabric. I'm starching it. I'm a starcher. Raise your hand out there if you're starcher too for your stock because you're not a quilter. So this, doesn't, <laughs> this does not apply to you. This is more a quilting thing. We definitely, there's like two schools of thought. Some people pre-wash all their stuff and don't. Well, I think the people that pre-wash mostly starch because then it comes out all wrinkly since it is cotton but I most definitely starch everything. And it's like a cheater method for me to pre-shrink my fabric because when you add heat and moisture, so the moisture coming from the starch and then the heat coming from the iron, it shrinks it a little bit. So I don't have to waste a full load of like washing and pre-washing my cotton fabrics. Nowadays, I feel like the fabrics, if they're designer quality quilting cottons, they're really good and I don't have a problem with them bleeding or anything in, my, um, in the finished project. I'm cutting vinyl. Just vinyl. Like She's cutting vinyl right it's now. Marine vinyl. Marine vinyl. So it's thicker stuff. Uh, Mimi says I should make the new Kaffa t-shirt. I don't know about that. It's not that cold here now. <laughs> mm -hmm. She has enough fluffy fur on her to uh, keep her bundled. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, awesome. Heidi says hi from Florida. She just purchased the Juki F600 from watching my review. You're going to love it. They don't make it anymore, but it's still an awesome machine. Yes, the pieces are vinyl, Donna. That's what she's cutting out. Hi, Margie. Oh, we got a bunch of people on here. Okay, y'all. Annette says, Amanda, how are the 12 purses coming? They're not. <laughs> Lily says she's a starcher. Hi, Lily. Uh, the For fabric sure. came in yesterday, but... Um... I took deposits for I'm not going to send out the rest of the payments until after the holidays so people don't have to worry about it. And then I'll give yourself all the some bags. time. Yeah. yeah. I don't got time for it right now. It came out a weird time. Yeah. That's a lot of bags though. Yeah. A lot of bags. Do you want these with short two inches? If you want it two yards? So what is it going Just do like one and three quarters. One and three quarters. Mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna, I've pressed maybe like four or five different prints that I'm gonna use for this quilt, so I'm gonna start cutting them now with my 10 inch slicer. If you don't know about my 10 inch slicer, it's just a ruler that I developed to be used with uh, 10 inch by 10 inch pre-cut squares several years ago, maybe 2015, I think. And we carry them in the online shop. You have a full video library of different ways that I show you how to use it on there. And then also, they're selling them on Amazon now. 
So you all, if you have Amazon Prime and stuff, that's another way that you can get a hold of my ruler. So you can type in five inch slicer or 10 inch slicer on Amazon and you can buy them there too. But they're great. It's kind of like my go-to for quickie gift projects. And this one will be good with just a variety of blues, different shades of blues and gray. I have to make sure this is lined up perfectly so it doesn't look dumb. I know. Was it printed on grain? Because you know how sometimes that is. It looks like the books line up like on yeah. these Yeah, oh, I see them. Good. That's always helpful. I feel like a lot of people get really stressed out when they're super perfectionist and they buy a directional print, but the fabric is not printed. Oh yeah. And they're like, but okay. it's it's not me. But I'm like, it's the fabric. I it's know. not always Sometimes printed. Sometimes I, I just ugh. I try to avoid like lines like this, mm -hmm. so you don't have to really think about exactly. it. Exactly. But this is the only one that was like that. So I have definitely been known to use directional prints and have them go any which way. <laughs> can't do it. I can. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to cut myself some 10 inch squares. So I said the ruler is designed to be used with 10 inch pre-cut squares, but I'm just cutting from my own yardage and scraps and fat quarters. So I'm just going to use my ruler and my mat to uh, cut out my 10 inch squares. And actually I'll use a 10 inch slicer because from here to here is 10 inches. So I'm going to use that to cut out some pieces for myself first. Because the zipper is going to go here. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. And you're going to center it there. Yeah, half inch. I think well, quarter inch on each side will work. Like, but. see, there's like this kind of oh, zipper I in see. the front. Cute. So that will go right in the middle of those two books. Yeah. So now you're obviously enjoying making this project, which is a gift for somebody else. So what would you do if after you see that you spent all this time making it for her? Say you go visit her and it's just like thrown in a corner somewhere. I mean... I'm always curious and I'll ask y'all this next because I'm going to tell I, you a story I, I that I actually I've haven't encountered anyone who like didn't like the stuff I made them. Okay. So that's good. <laughs> well, you must be making amazing things. I see like all these people like, oh, I made this quilt for my granddaughter and she hated it. I'm like, that's so rude. Like, <laughs> So this is a, a question that I always have. So one time, several years ago, I saw on the internet... Some lady had posted that she made, I think it was like her son and the daughter-in-law, a wedding gift. And she made a grandmother's flower garden quilt, all oh, hand-pieced, yeah. foundation, I mean, uh, English paper piecing, all by hand, hand-pieced, hand-quilted. And when she went to visit them, the quilt was folded up and in the dog crate, like the dog sleeping on it. And she was like, what do I do? I'm here now. So like the thread was like, people like, grab it, take it home, steal it back, like all this stuff. And I'm thinking like, Thing. that balance between like i want to feel appreciated or are you really making it for the other person to enjoy my husband is very much of the mindset of like once he decides that he's going to give something away or spend money on something for him it's already gone so he's like whatever you do from here on out is none of my business i don't care but i know a lot of quilters and people that spend a lot of time and energy making yeah. a gift they give it to someone and then they feel like it's a slap in the face what do y'all have to say about that? I feel like this conversation could go on forever of like, is it really none of your business? Like you gifted it to them. They could do whatever they want with it or what? Um, I don't know since I haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> so like I'm one to make quilts that to be used. So like if I made a quilt for somebody and they just had it in a closet or like on display on a rack, I'd be like, are you serious? Like use it, take it out, throw it on the floor, have your baby crawl on it. Like, so, I don't know. My husband's like, well, what if they really, really love their dog? I'm like, but the dog? <laughs> like, do you know how much time went into making that quilt? That's a little harsh. But at the same time, it's like, you gave it, you to, them gave it to them. So, Raylynn from Georgia says, I made a queen-size log cabin quilt for my daughter, and she put it in her car for the dog so they didn't mess up her back seat. How did that make you feel? <laughs> like... I the side of me that likes people to use things is like, oh, good, they like it, they're using it. But then it's like, it's not going to last you for a couple of years because you're tearing it up. But let me see what other people are saying. Oh, my gosh, Liz says, I think I would find it hard not to resort to murder. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So Miriam says, well, at least the dog was enjoying it. You see? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Caitlin says she's working on a Stephen King bag also. Yeah. How fun. That's my little purse bestie over there. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. June says, yes, I would feel like a slap in the face. 
Kathy says, you do have to let it go, but I'd be careful who I gave an expensive or yeah. homemade gift to. So this is what we call, like knitters call it, um, whether the recipient is knit worthy, quilters call it quilt worthy. Like, is this person somebody who I want to put in this amount of work to give them a handmade gift or not, you know? Let's see. Beth says, I love my dogs too. Raylan says she would be heart, oh, she was heartbroken. Um, I love handmade gifts personally. Like, I but not everybody does. Like, if they're not around it, they don't like have the same appreciation for it. I think. Even if it's not my style, I'm like, yay! Someone like spend time to make me something, and I love it, and I'm gonna use it all the time. But don't you think you feel that way because you can appreciate what went into it because you also create? And probably, but yeah. the fact that someone spent their time to make me something is like such a big deal. But a lot of, I mean, some people don't worry about that time thing. They're just like, uh, I don't like the colors. <laughs> They don't deserve presents. <laughs> See, Rita says quilt worthy is a real thing for me. It's true because, I mean, we yeah. spend a lot of time picking fabrics. takes forever. You got to spend money. People don't know how much it costs to make it like an actual quilt. They don't appreciate it. Deborah says people that are not creative or do not make things don't understand the time and effort that goes into the work. Don't let it bother you, uh, bother you what they do with it. Julie says a thing given willingly to someone without payment is a present. See, that's how my husband, he's just like, once it's gone, it's gone. It's out of my hands. Do as you please. And I feel like that too. But then again, I'm not really a gifter. Like when I do give things, it's like baby things. So you know they're going to use it because it's for a baby. Or oftentimes what I do is I include instructions with it so that they know like if maybe they've never received the handmade thing, they're just like, is this supposed to be like a decoration? Do I use it? Can I wash it? You know? So I'll include instructions with it so they know like, yeah, totally yeah. use it. But I even people say that to me. Like when I make a picnic quilt and we're out on a picnic, I'll have people that will say to me, like, did you make that? And they'll be like, oh, my gosh, why do you have it on the floor? I'm like, because I made it <laughs> yeah. to be thrown at the beach or to be used on grass in a park, you know? <laughs> Greener Pasture says, quilt worthy is my first thought when I give a quilt. Lisa says, I only give to those who ask if they can have one. Paula says, I think quilt worthy hit the nail on the head for sure. Getting back to the whole what to make for a boy or a man, I would make sure the person getting it would appreciate it. She says, boys don't usually. In your experience, right? So I think that's one thing about like making stuff with my kids. Like my kids totally appreciate stuff that people make for them because again, they make stuff so they know what goes into it, you know? My kid's happy to hand her anything. Yeah. Well, you make her amazing things, okay? <laughs> that girl cannot complain. She gets some super cool products. You can see her fabric stash I have for her for when she starts school. She's going to have the coolest For her wardrobe. outfits, yeah. So good. All the kids are going to be jealous. Hello. Her Dora backpack looks better than the Dora backpack. <laughs> Is that ridiculous or what? It's like purple marine vinyl, has the eyes. As soon as I saw it, I was like, backpack, backpack. <laughs> She's just like, yeah, my mom made it. <laughs> no biggie. She's definitely, spo she has a drawer full of bags that she's hoarding. Like, of course. <laughs> she's like, I'm putting them in this drawer to keep them safe. She's five. <laughs> That's good. Well, she knows what goes into them. Hello. She sees you spending the time doing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple squares here. I need to cut some more before I start. Let's see. This one I'll chop up into my 10 inch squares. Oh, Julie, you're sweet. She boosted my chat and gave a $5.99. Um, what do they call it on YouTube? I've only seen this done. I've never had anybody actually do it, I think. That's sweet of you. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. How fun. Hi, Liz from South Africa. Tanya says, I hope the quilts I give to close friends and family will be around forever. However, I did not pass my son's quilt to him or his kids. They wouldn't appreciate it like I do, I don't think. Where's that? My sons have seen the amount of time and money that goes into a quilt, so they appreciate them. I think that's part of it. It's part of the education thing. If I saw that, I would explain how much work went into it, and then maybe they would think twice about what to do with it. It's hard. Because if how many of you out there have been commissioned to make a quilt for somebody where they're like, meet me at the fabric store, we'll pick out fabrics. Or like you give them a price and they're just like looking at you crazy because they don't know how much it costs. So I know the people that do commission projects often will go to the fabric store with whoever wants it so they can see the price and see like, okay, two yards of this, two yards, and then the backing, five yards. It's like, this stuff adds up. And then on top of that, right, your time and expertise that you've built up over the years to be able to know how to make it. 
Yep. All the trial and error, all the money you use trying different things. I know. People don't realize that. Like, all of us, to get to the point where you are confident in your skills and making, yeah. like, really amazing things, how much trial and error, how much fabric you think you've wasted over the years on wrong cuts or mess ups? I mean, not too much, really. No? No. Oh, you're just so good. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> no, I <have>. Tanya <laughs> says, I know I have. I have like five projects like in a bucket that I'm never going to finish, but that's oh, about it. Yeah. Because you tackle stuff that you really, really, yeah. I'm like YOLO and I just do things. <laughs> and that's part of, I think, how a lot of us that are like self-taught just do it. Because you're not really afraid of, like, making the mistake. You're just yeah. like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It, like, there's so many people who hoard, like, their custom fabric because oh, they I don't want to cut into it. Yeah. But I'm, like, one of those people who, right when I get it, I'm like, yeah, let's make something. You know? Yeah, fearless. I'm <laughs> like that with myself. Am. I'm just like, whatever, I'll chop it up. And if I can't, then I can always reuse the fabric, assuming you haven't chopped it up into teensy pieces. Reuse it for something else. or Yeah, exactly. You can always make something else yeah. if you mess it up. And you just That's take out the awesome. stitches. I mean, they're just stitches. Just rip them out. For yeah. I really like this print, this blue print with these triangles. Yeah, that's cute. Super cute. And it's hard to find dark fabrics like that, I think. It's like kind of rare. Um, when I have to cut things, I like to lay all the pieces out in different ways to see what is the most like efficient, you know, not, yeah, the mo the best cuts so you can not waste as much fabric. I can get so much out of like such a small amount of fabric because of the way I cut things up. This fabric I don't really care about, so <laughs> I'm just cutting it. You're but, just cutting it. But when it's like a yard of like cotton spandex and I'm making something for me and my kid. Well, like, and they're like custom prints too yes. that you can't just like reorder yeah. anytime you want. So that's how I do it. I just lay everything down in different ways to see which is the best way to do it. Those of you that are some of my students might hear me use the term pattern Tetris, like I like to call it. And that's a great way to play around with the different... Um, but I also love fussy cutting, so... Lit. Well, because you do a lot of those custom <laughs> prints. So it's like, if you want the face of whatever this yeah, character I is... I like to have specific little sp pieces and like places, so... Yeah. You should be a quilter! Uh, fussy cutting is totally a quilter thing, too. <laughs> Maybe we'll get her to make a quilt one of these days. I'm really, like, OCD about fabric placement. I oh, see people who, like, Lord. will make a quilt with, like, characters, and there's not a full character, or, like, yeah. their head's cut off or something on a space, and I'm like, why? Yeah, because, why? well, sometimes they're so densely printed on the pat on the fabric that you have no other choice but to have a chunk of it or whatever. I yeah. Um, I'm that one. I will put a character upside down. I could care less. No. Keep it moving. Because I'm doing it more for the fabric than the actual motif, you know? I'm like, yeah, you could tell that's half of a flower. Why not? No. Can't do it. What you been working on, Tanya? Uh, nothing. A puppy. A puppy? Yeah. How fun. She's ridiculously cute. What kind of puppy is it? Uh, she's a rescue. And she's... Let's get a good picture of her. I have eight million of them. There she is oh, with my big cute. dog. Oh, how cute. Tanya's new, new puppy. puppy. with the big dog. How cute. So Ziggy and Maggie. Ziggy and Maggie. How cute. We had an Izzy before. Those are good cow names, too. I'm always like, the kids were trying to pick a new name for the calf. And I'm like, one to two syllables, that's it. Because a name could be super cute and long, but when you're out there hollering trying to call a cow in, it needs to be quick, you know? So we named her Coco. Coco Solstice, but Coco, okay? I love that movie, Coco. Which, what movie is that? It's like a Disney movie about a little Mexican kid no and for a, like that Dia de la Muerte. El Dia, Dia de la Muerte, yeah. Yeah. De los Muertos. I've never seen it. I didn't even know that existed. It's Clearly, so I don't watch it's TV. It's the cutest ever. Is it? After 12, I hooked you up then, remember? Because yes, <laughs> I guess she had just seen the post. You said you had just seen the sale thing on Facebook. Yeah. She came over here, she didn't make it before 12, but I still gave her the 50% off of the 
Fabulous. <laughs> the early hours. <laughs> Is it all? Everything lining and pockets and all? Um, I'm not going to do the insides of her oh, pocket. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Because <laughs> I'm just not doing it. Purse worthy. No. <laughs> Purse worthy. <It's> like, <laughs> I don't think she's used any of the things I made her, so. Yeah. But it's okay. I wouldn't be making it. Let's be real. <laughs> but then again, I don't do that. I don't, I don't really give gifts like that, you know? Cause like I said, I don't like to get gifts. Like I don't. But I have to like do something for her. Yeah. Well, that's very kind of you, Amanda. Like this print is kind of directional, but not really. Would it's you make not, sure that it's like in not line? Really, that's not really. Yeah, because I don't care. I mean, I'll do it crooked and. That's not really directional. It kind of is, though. Hey. They're in line. Yeah, but... <laughs> Hi, Margie. Susan says, uh, she was up till 2 o'clock in the morning making five of my pillowcases in Christmas flannels for the grandkids. That is going to be amazing. They will love that. Uh, hi, Scarlett. We are just working on some different products. I'm working on a 10-inch slicer baby quilt with some fabrics for a friend who had a baby. And Amanda is working on a marine vinyl purse for her mother-in-law. Yes? Yep. I'm using the Jasmine from Bagstock. That's the pattern I'm using. Bagstock is a pattern company? Yeah. Okay. June says she made 10 of my snap bags for her coworkers. Awesome. And this is something that we find too. We're talking about giving gifts to people who are going to appreciate and use it. Functional gifts and practical stuff. You're kind of upping your chance that they'll actually use it for that if it has a purpose, right? If it's not just like a pillow to put on their couch. Because if they don't like the colors or whatever, they probably won't really appreciate it. But if it's something that they can use... Do y'all find that to be true? That the projects that you make that are functional and practical or serve some type of useful purpose that people tend to like and use those more? I'm a very practical person, so. That's the kind of stuff I like to make for myself too. Miriam is asking, any ideas of what to make for cats? I don't have any pets. Make for cats? Um, my cats like to tear up really expensive yarn balls. <laughs> Just buy them a cheap ball of yarn. Yes, ladies, yarn ladies, yep. <laughs> they will tear it up. What else do they like to tear up? I wonder if we did like a bean bag that people like to fill up with scraps of fabric inside of it if you left it like partially opened. The cats will probably dig everything out of there, all the scraps, and you could just like throw it back in and fill the fluff. My cats would, because they love to dig in everything. Just get a cat box. <laughs> they do, I know. They get in every Just box that's box. partially opened. All right. Uh, Tracy says, I was up last night making bowl cozies for my family. Thank you for the tutorial. My husband loves them. Good. You see? A man project that people can make for guys and they'll still use because it's functional. Love that. Susie says, I'm having trouble getting my cam snaps to stay together. Any tips? So I would check what size you're using and the size of the die press. If you're using the, the handheld one instead of like the tabletop one, you might just need a little bit more pressure behind the handle because what it does is there's like a little screw head in that squeezes that center prong down. And if it doesn't squish it all the way down to where it's practically like squeezed into the hole that it went into on the other end of it, it stays a little bit loose and they can oftentimes pop out when you close and open them. So Put a little more pressure behind her. Get somebody else maybe with some stronger hands to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze well, there. Well, it depends on the brand too. Because... But she's using cam. Like oh, the actual like cam? cam? Yeah, okay, the cam. Because cam. Joanne's are Oh, no. I would not recommend anything else that's not the actual branded cam snaps. Because um, that's... I use a hammer for my rivets. For I don't rivets, have a yeah. rubber press. I use a hammer. And they work out pretty well. But I would like a rubber press. <laughs> yeah. They're fancy. You just end up getting like a bunch of different little The dies are stuff. so expensive. It's, to... it's like... I don't know, so I like to just hammer it. There's some good bundles out there though that you can get. I can't remember where I got mine, but I've had them for years too. And, oh, it's just like another piece of hardware to pull out when you go to use it. It's like, oh my I gosh. I brought my like rivets. But you do, you do make a lot of bags. So yeah, I make a lot of bags and I use a lot of rivets. So it just comes with that little thing, this little thing, mm -hmm. and this little circle thing. The setter and the anvil. Yeah, and I just hammer. 
I think the trick for that is like short, quick ones because if you go really hard, you can yeah, you can dunk set them off. Dunk, yeah. Dunk, dunk, dunk. All right, my son and grandsons have requested eye masks for Christmas as they love the one I made last year. That's awesome, Liz. So there is another one um, that people make for guys. Um, slippers. There's like slippers you can make from too. Yeah. I think anything with a functional purpose and then you just use fabrics that they would like. That's yeah. it, you know? Robes. Robes, for sure. Robes made out of minky. Right yeah. Nice. Uh, let's see. Who else is on here? Hi, Kim. She says, Merry Christmas. How's the cow doing? Did she have the baby? Oh my gosh, did you miss it? Kim, if you follow me on Facebook or, or Instagram, head on over. I posted a bunch of videos of the actual live birth. I did get a bunch of video footage that I'm going to put together into like a proper YouTube video to show y'all the process of what happens when a cow has a baby. So we'll see. All right, um, let's see. Any sewing retreats coming up? Pin? No retreat, a uh, safety pin? Yeah. Um, she can keep her pants. There's a, um, in that shelf over there, there's a box, like a brown box. If you open it up, there's a bunch in there. Right there in that shelf under. Do you see a little brown box, or a white box maybe? Let me see. Oh, that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're all in there. But they're the big ones. Like the two inch ones that we, yeah. Say what? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hi, Clovis from Indiana. Oh, she Karen's making her son-in-law the hair tube. My husband loves these things. Loves them, loves them, loves them. Oh, for the cats, Caitlin suggested a catnip filled little stuffed animal. My kids used to make that. They used to make like little fishy ones out of felt and we'd stuff the catnip in it. Those cats would go crazy for those little fishy toys. Let's see. No sewing retreats. As of right now, we don't have anything in the works. We're kind of trying to put the final touches on the February. We have a quilting cruise coming up now this coming February. And after that, then I'll have a little more time to sit down and kind of figure out what I'm doing next year. Tracy says you can make them a cat house too. Awesome. Okay. Tracy says, I've been trying to figure out how to keep a pattern together without cutting out just one size. Do you use tracing paper to do this? Yes. Yeah. So I'm assuming you're talking about garments and I absolutely use, right? We all use rolls of tracing paper when you have a bunch of patterns. A lot of the sewing patterns that we make here are the Jali patterns, which include anywhere from 27 to 29 different sizes. And there's no way that I'm gonna cut out one size and ruin that whole pattern with that many sizes in it. So I definitely recommend either medical examination paper, some type of tracing paper, Swedish tracing paper. We have a tracing paper that we sell here in the shop that's a big roll um, that's 46 inches tall. So it's a great long, big chunk so you don't have to be taping pieces together. But anything like that that you can trace so that you preserve the original and then um, cut the pieces that you need, okay? Uh, let's see. I just started quilting this year. I'm working on my first laptop quilt. I do a lot of knitting. So she knits a lot of afghans. Oh, you're like a lap size quilt. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great size to start off with for sure. I don't sell it online to ship Tracy because it's such an awkward size and shape, but this is what we use. So you just anything that's kind of sheer that you can put, you know? that you can use to um, trace over. So that it, it just has to be translucent enough that you can see the pattern lines through it, and then you can trace, and that's it. I use parchment paper or whatever, like cooking paper. The yeah, parchment paper. But the only thing about that is it's waxy, so you can't like tape anything or... Oh, I see. What you, it's not waxy, but it just, it's nonstick. Yeah. It's, yeah. You can't. You can't tape it. I know, especially no, if you're using like, like a painter's tape, it, it'll just it come right up. Maybe it wasn't parchment. Maybe it's Maybe wax used. paper, because there's two different. Parchment and then there's something wax. Something with a C. Confectionery or something. I don't know. Some sort of paper. Like butcher paper? I don't know. Sometimes they call it. Huh. But anything clear enough that you can see through, you can do that. Um, Christy says vellum works. Yep. Perfectly, you know, translucent enough to see the lines through. 
Awesome, Janice says she's just tuning in, welcome. She's in the process of making her second Wash Me Wear Me bag as a Christmas gift. Good deal, we're all working on gifts here too. Let me cut a little bit more of this and then I'll finally take out my uh, spinning cutting mat thing so I can use my 10 inch slicer and cut my blocks. All right, it's beautiful. Interfacing cut or what? Yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Cutting is my least favorite. That's activity. my favorite part. What is your favorite part of the making process? Whatever it is with fabric. For quilting, for sure, for me, is the cutting. I love cutting fabric. My favorite part is the designing part. Oh, boring. What? There's nothing in your actual hands to do. What do you mean? You're just like coming up with the ideas. I like choosing... coming up with ideas. Oh, I get super God. excited. I can't. I need, like, if somebody told me to cut, like, 275 rectangles that measured two and seven eighths by three and one quarter. I love that. Like just those random off measurements to have them in my head to have to cut repeatedly. I love it. Oh, that sounds terrible. I'm going to get you to make a quilt one of these days, girl. One of these days. If you cut it. I'll cut it. Listen, I'll cut it. I'll give it to you to sew because I am not a fan of piecing. So let's see what people are saying. June says sewing is her favorite part. Clovis says the sewing. Angelia says getting it put together. Susan says the last step. Okay. A lot of people, I mean, I do like the hand binding because it's like you're at the end, but it's also after doing so much on a machine, it gives you like that little taste of just like sitting there with it and doing a little bit by hand. Lisa says designing it definitely. So she's with you on that. Oh, Audrey says, I think everything is fun when you're doing it with friends like here now. That's awesome. I know that's why there's so much like quilt guilds and bees where you can actually get together because the process of making something, it's really solitary. Right. Is this, can I, is this going to reach over here? Yeah, you can totally pull it. It's long. All right. Thank you, madam. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Miram says her favorite part is flipping it right side out. <laughs> Oh, birthing the birthing bag out. Bags, I always get so nervous because I'm like, what if the stitches? Uh... Make sure you follow that seam and allowance then, like, and it'll and turn then out you right. Birth it and then you find out you like miss a little piece or you did something wrong. And you're like, crap, now I have to do it all over again. Okay. Let's see. Durfuse. She loves this stuff. I put you on the Durfuse game. I know, the Durfuse is so nice. I can't like make bags without it now. And I think it works great, especially if, like if you're using vinyl, like how you do, or canvas, like the thicker stuff, it definitely is in line with giving the bags that kind of good structure. And Durfuse is just a non-woven fusible interfacing. It's one side fusible and we have it in our online shop. Um, it depends on the bag. It's not like a SF-101, like a Pelon woven interfacing. It's yeah. crisper, it's more like, papery like but it really gives the project like a little more weight you see the shiny side is the fusible the adhesive sides and then the other side it's kind of so you can see that there's less drape to it than there would be out of a woven and it makes interface. it like crisp and like stiffer and i like that yeah i like that on the bags and it's like it makes i don't know the sf 101 i feel like it's harder to fuse and there's always like bubbles and stuff if you don't yeah. do it right but this one I never have a problem with. It's so like, nice and smooth. Crisp. Another great Bozel product. Crisp. What kind of projects are y'all working on? Anybody else gift project making today? Last minute. <laughs> I don't have a deadline for this. Do you for that? Yeah, Christmas. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, but a bag is quicker to make yeah, this than, is gonna be quick. than a quilt for sure. I still have to make the two big blankets that I need to make. And what did you say those are made of? Fleece again? Um, or flannel? Minkies. Oh, minky. Okay. Whew. Good well, luck I, wrestling are... that in your throat space of the machine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I surge it together and then I top stitch it later. Like a simple. All right. Um, I do use Durafuse now instead of the SF-101, but I, I use the SF-101 for like pocket linings and stuff so i don't waste the nicer stuff because you don't really need so what was the question that somebody asked they asked if i use it instead of sf -1. oh okay yeah i wouldn't use it on the lining though no i don't no. really use it on the lining or like the like if you have an inside pocket or something i'll use the sf 101 mm -hmm. but for this one since it's canvas and i'm not using fleece the fusible fleece i'm gonna interface the lining with the durfuse just to make it a little like sturdier Crisper on the inside too yeah 
Kim is uh, says she has to sew some pajamas, some hooded scarves, and a couple of bags. Well, that sounds fun. Those are kind of smaller-ish, quick-year projects to crank out. Carol says she's sitting in a motel room. She's going to a wedding in a few hours. Well, have fun with that. Hope you get to eat some good food. Tracy's working on more bowl cozies, tote bags, and PJs. That's like a theme. There's like a lot of those type of projects. Lily's working. Uh, she's making her granddaughter's first Christmas stocking. That's nice. And Karen says she's taking a break from personalized stockings. Angelia is making NCW wallets, purses, and embroidered towels and shirts. You see, people like to make a lot of like smaller, quickier projects. Uh, those wallets are not quick. Okay. Well, if you do it assembly line style, <laughs> anything can be. Wallet. I've owned that pattern for like a You've year never made and it? I've never made it. Oh my gosh, they're like super popular. I know. I like the Marilyn from Lynn's Handmade Design, that wallet pattern. That's I prefer that one because it's not as crazy. I don't need all those pockets. <laughs> well, that's what people like, you know? Yeah. Uh, Liz is making eye masks. Awesome. Yana is tuning in from Cyprus. Wow. Awesome. Well, hello from Florida. Uh, I love the, Carla says she loves the process of sewing itself. It's meditative. She hates putting the quilts together. That is probably my least favorite part of the entire quilt making process is piecing. It's too monotonous. Like it just is so boring. <laughs> So boring. I feel like that would be what I would like. Oh, I'll cut the pieces. I'll pass them <laughs> off to you. And then you can give it back to me. You hate piecing? Cutting. Cutting is the bomb. No. It's super fun. So here's my 10 inch slicer. Get my machine over. Let's see. Hi from the UK. Hi. Let me put this down maybe a little. Maybe not. I'm just going to tweak this a little in case anybody does want to see what we're doing on the actual table itself. Margie's working on a Christmas cross stitch until she loses the afternoon sun. Then she's going to make a puppy dog pals pillowcase for her grandson. How cute. Heidi just made several hanging towels and is making Finnish coffee bread today. Sounds delicious. Um, and in the future, Greener Pasture says uh, they want to make uh, what? Useful aprons. I love useful projects. Just anything practical. I might be working on some more gardening kind of ideas. I'm, I'm starting a bunch of seeds in my new little greenhouse here in the winter because we can. I mean, I have stuff in the ground right now in Florida, but um, i am be working a lot more in the garden. I have two different gardening plots. Once my house is done, I'll be doing more stuff. So we'll see what kind of projects I start making for the garden. I need to make one of those like aprons to collect the eggs so my kids can go out there and get. You have to bring me eggs one time. Oh, I you want... have to remind me, girl. I want fresh eggs. You have to remind me. I don't remember. <laughs> they better taste like Colombian eggs. <laughs> they taste better than Colombian eggs, okay? Hey, in Colombia... <laughs> yes, I do. They're probably still giving them grain and stuff, you know? No, the eggs in Colombia are so delicious. <laughs> They're like regular eggs, like in any other country. No, they taste so different than the eggs here. Like what? What do they feed the chickens? I don't know, but the flavor, <laughs> the flavor is so much more intense. Egg here. Nice. Yeah, oh, yeah. That, that's what a natural egg is. And the chicken is. too. The chicken tastes different too. Well, everything tastes different if you grow it natural. I came back and I was so like food depressed because the food over there is so much better. <laughs> that's what happens. Why do you think I live on a little farm? I know. I wish I lived on a little farm. <laughs> it's a lot of work though. A lot of work. And a lot of money. People are like, oh, do you do it because it's cheaper? And it's like, um, no, there's nothing cheap about it. <laughs> Let me see. I did one and a quarter here. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. One and a quarter here. It's been a while since I made this block. Let's see. And one and a quarter here. I'm making reverse cuts with the template, so it is helpful to have one of these kind of spinning cutting mats, just so I don't have to pick up everything and move it. Let me just stack my pieces here, and then I'll play my swapping game with the different fabrics. I want maybe a gray next. Where are my squares here? Angelia asked, where'd you get the revolving mat from? The revolving mat, this one is an Olfa one, which is the same brand of all the mats that I use. Um, I probably just got this on Amazon, really. 
And this is a 12 inch one. They have a bigger one that's like 17 inches maybe, like a big, big one. But because the 10 inch slicer is for 10 inch squares, 12 is plenty big. You know, you still have like a little buffer room all the way around. You can find some local shops sell them. I usually don't sell stuff like this in my shop just because people can get them at Joann's with like a coupon or when they're on sale, they go like 40% off or whatever, you know? Um, let's see. What other projects is anybody else saying what they're working on? I'm just going to cut up a bunch of blocks and then I'm going to hand them off to Amanda to piece for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so boring literally so boring so i'll show y'all so i do the exact same cuts this is called the peak block p-e-a-k and if you do a, just a google search you can type in crafty gemini peak block or crafty gemini 10 inch slicer you'll come across the video tutorial for this i cut the same cuts from all my squares and then i swap the pieces out i'm gonna show what they're asking about um so like that would be one block this is the wallet pattern I was talking about. This is the um, super cute, the Marilyn from Lynn's Handmade Designs, and it's nice because it's it's pretty quick to make. It has all these card slots, and then it has like these little pockets to put stuff in. And it's vinyl. You use yeah, both yeah, vinyl and yeah, cotton. Yeah, I use vinyl and cotton. And then it has like a zipper pouch here for like change and everything. I put um a like a, a strap on it, like a little thing, so I could have it like a wristlet it doesn't come that way but that's how i prefer to do it cute and that's from uh, that chunk of fabric on the front is from one of those yeah, custom print from things one of the custom yeah. places see <laughs> so many projects especially like little bags and wallets like that are great to use up scraps because you don't need much fabric at all the the like card slots take a bit of fabric because they're doubled up yeah because you have to like hold yeah, them, hold them, hold them, hold them. Mm -hmm. yeah I will leave this again in a second. That looks like the shape of the ethyl. Mm, it's, it's a bit different than the ethyl. Yeah. But it All has right. that gusset bottom like that too, right? Yeah. Time to do that little zipper thing that makes me nervous. Fun times. She's super perfectionist. Like if she doesn't get it right the first time, she'll take it out. Huh. <laughs> Not me, wing it. But um, we have some wash away wonder tape there too that you could if you need to use it to align anything what's the question you gotta say the question first i know i <laughs> i typed the pattern into the um chat oh okay. a little ways up if you want to go look at it is that the lynn that did um that same kind of fanny pack project that laura had bought the one time or no uh yeah it's the same, the same designer lady, the same yeah. designer yeah cool all right all right, so we are gonna keep on working here. We'll probably break in a little bit, and I think maybe we'll head on over um, on Facebook and just pop our faces in there since we've been on here already for just about an hour. So we'll be sure to, uh, are you gonna post a picture of it? Or you can't share the picture of it, of this bag? I can share a picture. I don't yeah. think she watches any of this. Stuff. Okay, even better. So we'll post a picture of Amanda's finished bag when she's done. I don't know that you'll finish it today though. Yeah. No. <laughs> Not quite a zippered pouch, more involved than that for sure. All right, so thank you everybody for tuning in. I'll keep working on this. Um, you can check out 10 Inch Slicer. I have a full like video library of tutorials. And remember I said you can also get these in our online shop or on Amazon now. So Crafty Gemini 10 Inch Slicer Ruler. And I will keep working on my blocks and I'll share with you obviously the finished quilt when I get around to it. I'm not sure when, but I'm just gonna keep cutting. And unfortunately, piecing the blocks together, which is a super boring part for me. But thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Happy holidays. Hope you can um, meet all your holiday-making deadlines. And we'll see you in the next live chat. Bye. Say bye, Amanda. Bye. <laughs> Sorry.